Okay, the video I'm doing today is going to have to do with object reuse in Blender and data organization. On the face of it, the grease pencil uh, isn't super good at allowing you to reuse um, data blocks because you can only see one at a time. Uh, whether it's associated with the scene as this is or whether your data blocks are associated with an object you could have a bunch of grease pencil layers associated with an object but if you click on a different object you're gonna see only one at a time so that's kind of a strange limitation I assume they're gonna fix in Blender 2.8 but how big of a problem is it well it turns out it's actually not that big of a problem so we have this scene with this character where the grease pencil layers have been animated a little bit and the um, this this hand is uh, associated with this empty. Uh, in other words, if I look at the hand and look down here, it's parented to empty EMP underscore left hand. Okay, now you'll notice all my layers are locked. That's why everything looks grayed out. If I unlock them, wango bango, there they'd be. Okay. So this is a little bit of a stilted situation because the it's already been animated. If you are going to design a character and then you want to be able to take a, a character that's built up in sections and import it into another Blender scene to reuse it, you probably would not want any animation baked into it. It's possible that you would, but in most cases, if you're just starting with a character, you wouldn't. So in this case, just as a starting point to show you this, I do have that hand parented to that empty, and then I also have this empty here that when I uh, move it, it moves the whole, the whole character with him. This hand here, I, I, I just moved the points. When it animated, I just moved them into a different position and, you know, to just make it work, because this is a quick and dirty thing as a test. Now this empty here is linked to the guy's head and again, this is a stilted situation. I've already moved the, the head elements to a different layer so you can sort of see what is going to happen here. But it's quite, it's a lot more powerful than you might think in terms of the way you can sort of share um, grease pencil layers and data uh, either within a scene or within a Blender project or between Blender projects. So now if I go to this layer here, which I've called head, you can see the head and the head um, is just a static drawing okay now this is a really common scenario where you, you you the likelihood is you would want his mouth in a separate layer where you could articulate speech but other than that you kinda want this whole head to operate as a single cohesive unit so now the problem is for organizational purposes I drew this in one grease pencil data block and obviously you could say, well, Dave, that's stupid. Why didn't you just hide your other layers and just draw them in their own layers and, and keep it all together? And that's completely valid. That is true. What I'm trying to do here is show you what you can do. The more complex things get, the more you want to be able to break them up into pieces. So here's how you would do that. First of all, if you look at the head, you've got two layers called face and hair. Okay? So if... So I'm in edit strokes mode. If I hit A to select all, I've selected all the points from this, uh, this grease pencil data block. Okay. Now if I go back here, if, well, let's just say I cut them. Okay. Now if I go back to this grease pencil data block and I hit control V, oh, doesn't work. Well, the reason it doesn't work is in both the source and destination, you have to be in edit strokes mode. Okay, so now when I hit edit strokes, there it is. However, as you can see, when I hide the hand layer, those strokes were pasted into the hand layer. That's a little bit of a problem. That's not really what I wanted. So I'm going to cut it back out again. And I'm going to go back here and you'll notice, again, face and hair are the two layers. Now watch this. If I go over here, and create a lay create two layers and I'm gonna call them face and hair paste 
look at Blender knew what I wanted to do. As long as there's equivalently named layers, it will cut and paste them from one scene to another where you want them to be. Now in this case, again we have this animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the face and I'm going to I'm going to uh, parent that to the EMP underscore head and the hair, same thing. Okay. Now my character moves as a complete unit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is my what I want to be able to do now is theoretically take this character and bring him into a completely different Blender scene where he might be combined with other other characters. Okay, how can you do that? Like I said, on the face of it, it really doesn't seem like you can because you can only have one scene data block showing and you can only have one object data block showing. Okay, here's how you do it. And I want to give you a little theory here. Um, I want to emphasize this. And this is true with any software you use, whether you're trying to use Open Tunes or some of the new animation stuff in Krita, whatever you're doing. Once you get beyond a very trivial scene, you... you things get unwieldy. It's just a fact of life in animation. You are going to deal with lots and lots of layers, probably lots and lots of colors as well, like here on your palette. Those lists get longer and longer, and the truth is there's not really any way around it, okay? And if you think Blender's complicated, like I said, go use Open Tunes because, like, I, you know, get you get past a trivial scene and you've got oodles of layers and columns and lists that you have to wade through to get to what you want to get to. In most respects, Blender's pretty, pretty good in, uh, at letting you keep things accessible. But anyway, um, in fact, let me let me even divert and say this: if you really wanted, um, let me solo this. Uh, let me solo this layer. I'm uh, sorry. Okay. I'm going to turn that on too. If you really wanted this to be as uh, easy to organize as possible, all you'd really have to do actually is just render it. Let's just say, you know, obviously you wouldn't want it up there. You want it to fill the whole screen. But render it, save it as an image, save it as a ping with an alpha channel, and then map it to a plane. And then you've effectively taken all your grease pencil layers and baked them into a single object. And you can do that now. Um, you don't have to wait for Blender 2.8 to do that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, but having said that, what we're after here is reuse. So, here's how you do it. I'm going to save this scene. And, uh, let me think here for a minute how I want to do this. I want to make sure that I named all my empties properly. Empty head. Bear with me, folks. Item. Empty head. Empty left hand. Empty base. Okay. Okay, here's how you reuse between one Blender scene and another. This is a big deal, okay? You cannot have... If you want to keep this articulation where your grease pencil layers are locked to the empties and all that sort of thing, this is how you have to do it. You cannot have your grease pencil data associated with the scene. Otherwise, it will not import correctly. You can import the grease pencil data, and you can import the objects into another Blender project. But the relationships, the linkages, will not be preserved. All these bone icons will disappear. So how do you do it? Here's how you do it. You take your scene grease pencil block that has all these layers and you go to object and I'm gonna select the base the base of my object that's like the parent of the whole scene and I am going to associate that grease pencil data block with the object okay now it can still be associated with the scene but just for illustration purposes I'm gonna delete this so now there is no grease pencil data block associated with the scene it's associated with the object well here's there, there's an inherent problem with that from a workflow standpoint. If I click on one of the other objects, because the grease pencil data block is not associated with that object, my grease pencil data block disappears. Okay, 
That That's kind of dumb, but it is what it is, and there's a way to work with it. Okay? Um, because the overall data block is now associated with the object, now if I save my project, and I go ahead and create a new project, whoopsie, okay, and I hit Shift F1 to import, okay, and I'm going to go into that particular blend file that I was just working in, and I'm going to go to my objects, okay, there's my three objects, the base, the head, and the left hand, okay, I append from library, and because the grease pencil layers were associated with this object, Sorry, I gotta get out of edit mode. I've got my default scene set in set so that it's in edit strokes mode right out of the right out of the blocks. Okay, so there is my character, and look, all the relationships are preserved. But the problem is, if I want to go and do some animating on on these empties, I'm hosed again. So you just reverse the process. Go to your scene, associate that grease pencil data block, and then go back to your object and delete it. Now. The grease pencil data block is once again associated completely with the scene and all your object hierarchy and relationships are preserved. Okay, so um, there's another thing I want to show you that kind of relates to this matter of data sharing. Um, let me think how I want to explain this. Um, I guess I already showed you actually. The key thing is when you're cutting and pasting, whether you're cutting and pasting from one uh, data block to another or from a blender scene to another, it, it, it doesn't matter as long as you, as long as the destination grease pencil data block has layers that have the same names as the objects that you're cutting and pasting from one to the other, they will paste into their proper layers. Okay, um, and it's it's kind of interesting. One one interesting thing about that is that, um, and I'm not going to illustrate it here, but if you take an object and cut and paste it from one data block to another, what you'll find is its palette of colors travels with it, even though up in the palette list you you may it, it may show up empty. Okay. So what that means is from the source, you can go back and change the colors and those colors will propagate to the objects that you pasted into another scene or another data block. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, do, 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 how can I illustrate that? Let me, let me give that a try and then I'll, I'll call it good for today. All right, so I'm gonna grab uh, L to select linked and I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy those points and now I'm going to go ahead and create a new grease pencil. In fact, I'll go back to this one. I'll go back. Oh, um, yeah, I'll go back to this grease pencil data block. Okay, if I paste this back in, I got to be in edit strokes mode. I paste that back in. Okay. Now in this case, <laughs> oh boy, for reasons I probably can't explain. Let's do it this way. Let me let me let me redo this. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new grease pencil data block. Okay, go into edit strokes mode and paste. Okay, now you can see this is what I was talking about. You got your layer, you pasted your strokes in, but look, there's no, there's no palette. Okay, now if I go back here and I go and say, well, we need to give this guy a little bit more of a suntan, and then I go to this other data block, you see that that color change propagated through from from one block to the other so that's just something to be aware of I have seen it where if if I now immediately start to draw then it goes ahead and creates a palette for me and the first color as you can see that it added is the one that's associated with this so it's kind of smart it's a little it's not very intuitive um, frankly I suspect with blender 2.8 what we're gonna find is that the data management will probably be more intuitive um, it might not necessarily actually be all that more capable, although I am hoping that uh, at least 
having grease pencil objects as true objects in Blender, I don't care about the ability to add modifiers, frankly. That's that was on a recent video that Peppy Land alias Danielara um posted. I mean, that is kind of cool, but you can already take your art, map it to a plane and add med modifiers to that. So, it's you know, it's it's um, in practice how much am I really going to use that benefit? The thing that's going to matter is that I can have multiple complete grease pencil objects appearing in a scene at the same time and I can keep my data organized. So what I've shown you here today is you're already able in Blender 2.78 to keep your data organized. You just have to know how to do it. And so anyway, now you know how you can create an object in in multiple grease pencil data blocks, keep your work separated and then bring it all together using using layer naming. You can bring them all into a single grease pencil data uh, data block, and then you can associate that more complex data block with an object, save it, and magically it now becomes a, able to be imported as a complete complex uh, character into another Blender scene for use anytime you want. And all the the um, the actually I, I should say. The animation will be preserved if you import, um, if I'm not mistaken, if you import a data block from one scene or one Blender project to another, the animation will be preserved. But um, if you cut and paste points, animation is not preserved. Okay, so that's just something to be aware of. Because when you cut and paste points, all you're really doing is taking the points associated with a single keyframe. Right? So if I cut these out, Control X right now, as you can see, when I get to the next keyframe, um, okay, apparently there aren't any keyframes associated with this uh, face. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Control Z. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to just move these points around. Okay, that created a keyframe. So now if I take this, for example, and I cut it, once I get to that new keyframe, it's still there. So what does that tell you? That tells you that from a workflow standpoint, you want to design your characters um, not animated. You know, you want to design static characters, save them to a file, and you want to be very careful about working in stages because once you start baking keyframes into something, invariably you're you're going to want to go back and change something. And so that's just a workflow and planning um, tip. But anyway, with that, that's it for today. Hope this was helpful for you.